Hi everyone, welcome back to another one of my Asana training videos. In this video today, I want to talk about Asana versus Trello and explain what each of these two tools are and why you might choose to use either of these tools. So this video really is intended for someone who is still shopping around, still deciding whether to use something like Trello or Asana. To help me, I've got Brittany Joyner with me. Brittany is a self-proclaimed Trello super nerd and she was uh, voted the most likely to get a Trello tattoo. So I think she's the perfect person to talk to. So we're gonna be talking about Asana and Trello today. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. And if you do want help with Asana, I'm gonna put details of my consulting services down below. Brittany will do the same. I'll include details on how you can contact Brittany if you need help with Trello. So Brittany, thanks for joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm super excited to talk about this. Yeah, I guess to help people uh, kick th to kick this off, um, could you just just describe Trello to someone that hasn't used it before? What is Trello? So Trello, the way I like to think of it, is basically a digital whiteboard with supercharged sticky notes, and so it's a it's a whiteboard that you can access anywhere. You can access it from your phone. You can access it on your computer, your iPad. You can even access it offline, and it's this little canvas here um, that's made up of lists. So you can have lists of, you know, whatever you want them to be. You can make it, you know, to do, doing, done, which not to steal my thunder, but that's a pretty common sort of flow. Um, and then within it, there's these little cards that are these supercharged sticky notes. So you can have a task in it. And within it, there's all sorts of things you can do to give it um, give it more robust functionality to whether it's assigning members or organizing due dates or even adding like subtasks within it. So at a high level, um, it's a digital whiteboard with supercharged sticky notes. Awesome. And I'll just share my screen. I'll talk about the Asana side of the equation. So how I describe Asana is as a work management tool. So um, you organize similar to Trello. And I think there's a lot of overlap here. Asana is structured with teams. So I have a team here called poolminers.com. And then within my team, um, I have projects that I'm working on. So like here's content that I'm planning and I can see I've got this calendar view here. I can see content that I've got coming up and each of these is basically a task and I can see who's responsible for it, what subtasks we have due and that kind of thing. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, each of these is a project. Um, if I go to my demo account briefly, one of the nice things is that you can actually look at your work in different ways. So you can actually see the status of multiple projects in one view. So Asana, how I would describe it is, is it's really this hub for managing all of the work that you're doing. And that work primarily lives in projects. And then Asana gives you different ways to track the status of that work. And ultimately, it's designed to answer this question about who is doing what and by when. And it really empowers people to, um, everyone can see what they're responsible for, when it's due, and project managers can track at a high level the status of different projects and things. So that's a sort of very high level view of what Asana is. Um, I, I guess I would just add maybe one more thing, which is Asana being the hub for your work. It can also be one of the main tools that people use to communicate as well. And I know Trello does the same. Um, so a lot of people who use Asana actually communicate back and forth via comments instead of using Slack or email. And that way your conversations are actually living in your projects and in the tasks that you're working on. What would be, um, what type of user is a good fit for Trello? If somebody's sitting there going, I don't know if it's right for me, like what are the typical, the typical user that you work with or that is signing up to Trello, what do they look like? Yeah, yeah, it's a good question. So the typical user is, is someone who has a variety of use cases or things that they want to do, but they really want one tool and they just want to kind of get something out there and get started with it. They, they, they don't want something that has a lot of overhead and having to go learn a new tool or something complicated that does a bajillion things. They want something they can just throw out there and, and get started with really quickly. And so just kind of, you know, show Trello again here. Um, one of the things I love about it is, and what makes it so easy for that kind of person is it's very quick to get started. You can literally just create a board with a couple of clicks. You saw me define these lists and these cards. It's very easy to drag and drop. If you're trying to collaborate with other people, you don't have a steep learning curve of being like, oh, well, you've got to go do this. You, you've got to go do this and, you know, needing to give documentation on how to get started with it. Um, but at the same time, if you want to be able to scale it up, 
uh, as you grow, then you're definitely going to be able to do that because you can add, you know, power ups that take it to the next level. Um, you can add automation, you can connect it with Zapier and basically take something that started really simple and build it to fit every sort of custom need that you can imagine. Um, so what I would say that the typical Asana user looks like is, you know, in our business, we work with a lot of small to medium sized businesses. Um, a lot of people think, you know, I'm working on my own, so I probably can't use Asana because uh, it is marketed as a team, a tool for teams. Um, I, I would push back on that. And I would actually say a lot of uh, even just using myself as an example, I started using Asana on my own. Only in the last few years have I actually invited team members in. So even if you're working on your own, if you're a, you know, a solo operator or you're even just somebody um, using it for personal projects, I think Asana could be a great fit on the free plan. Um, most of our clients are more small to medium sized businesses. Um, it's really versatile. So it's not specific to any one particular industry. We see a lot of uh, professional service companies like um, uh, marketing agencies or tech companies um, using a tool like Asana. Um, but really, as I said, it's a work management tool. So if you need a tool to manage your work, Asana is a potential option. Um, and it is very scalable as well. I think, you know, Asana has the business and its enterprise plans. So it can actually scale up. And we do sometimes work with big enterprise companies where maybe a department within that enterprise is using it. Um, so, and, and the pricing of Asana, which we will get into, I think they have a price point for each of those different types of types and size of user as well. So I think it can, a bit like Trello, you can start with it quite sort of small and basic and it can scale and grow with you when you're ready to unlock those additional features. So the next question, Brittany, is um, what, I guess, what are the strengths of Trello? Like what types of work, you know, what workflows or types of project? I mean, I know you've, you've described it as this sort of digital whiteboard, but are there any common use cases for something like Trello? What do you see it most commonly being used for? Trello works really well with Kanban style workflows. So what I mean by that is anything that's a to do, doing, done sort of sort of linear process. So if you're not familiar with agile methodologies, it's sort of this concept of everything sits in one backlog and you tackle things a couple at a time as they come into a queue and they move through that linear workflow. So that's where I find Trello really shines. Um, you could use it at work in, in those sort of workflows a lot of software teams will use that to manage different features and bugs they want to get through. Um, but it's really popular with other teams as well, like marketing, um, even sales teams I've seen have used it or content teams. So just for a specific example, you can see my own sort of boards here. This is my personal sprint board. I, I very much use it to categorize. Here's the things I want to accomplish this week and move cards into doing and done as they're completed. And it, it gives me a great way to sort of organize that linear workflow. Um, but that's really where Trello shines is any sort of, I know I keep saying it, but a linear workflow where each sort of item goes through the same process. So it could be like a content calendar, for instance. I also use Trello for keeping track of the different pieces of content that I want to make um, for my YouTube channel and for my Trello blog and just different pieces of, of content to promote. And so it's a, it's a good way that each card is its own idea and it goes through a linear process of, I here it starts as an idea and then it goes into currently writing it and then published. And, you know, you could have additional stages like promotable and, and things like that. So anything that has a very standard sort of goes from this yeah. to that to that step, that's what you want to use it for. Yeah, I've seen that a lot with um, when I've worked with clients who have maybe used Trello in the past, they often reference it's great for that Kanban style of working that, like you said, linear, linear um, process. One of the things I really like about Asana is that um, you can adopt like a Kanban workflow. So if I show my screen here, this is an example of a sales CRM project. And you can see it's actually got this very Trello-esque feel to it. You can define these stages here. Um, one of the nice things about Asana is they don't force you to use it in a particular view. So I could set up my project as a list and I can organize my project into different phases and set up milestones here. I could even, if I go to like this new product launch, there's also this really useful timeline view. So if I zoom out a little bit, uh, let's go. 
here. I can see what tasks we have coming up and I can see the dependencies between tasks. So it's nice because it's quite versatile. You can structure Asana and view projects in different ways. Um, I mean, with that, that's part of the challenge of Asana as well, is there is a, maybe a bit more of a learning curve compared to Trello because sometimes you're not sure, like, should I set up a project like this or like this? Um, so in terms of the types of projects it's good at managing, any kind of what I call like a an actual project, like a project is typically something that has a start and an end date. So here's like launching a new product and we've got various phases that we have to go through. I think Asana is great at those type of like temporary projects, but you can also set it up. So this is what I refer to as an evergreen project. Evergreen meaning it's sort of just an ongoing area of work, you know, accounting, for example. So even just the, the, the everyday tasks that we're working on that aren't really part of a project could be set up in Asana. Um, and then you can set up what I what I call like a process project, or I think you know it's that linear move the moving tasks through phases, for example. Um, so yeah, Asana can be customized and structured in lots of different ways to manage projects, areas of work, linear projects or workflows and work requests as well. That's the type of thing you can do. But yeah, it sounds like maybe a bit more of a learning curve with Asana compared to something like Trello. Okay, Brittany, what is Trello not good at? Like, is there any sort of limitations or anything that you've seen people try and do with it that it's just not not great at? Yeah, so definitely. The way I like to think of Trello, it's fantastic. They're Lego blocks, um, which if you've ever had Legos, you love them. They're great. You can do so much with them. You can build a Death Star. You can build a Hogwarts castle. But you might just get a bucket of Legos and be like, so I know I can build those things, but how do I actually get there? And yeah. so I think that's actually a, a bit of a, a challenge with Trello is being able to um, being able to to build what you need. Uh, 99% of the time, it's definitely something you can do, but you might need a, a bit of a Sherpa or someone to, to help you get there and give you a sort of blueprint of sorts. And so that's why, you know, I've created various pieces of content on YouTube and also on my blog and try to, you know, keep up in the Atlassian forums and, and stuff to make sure that, you know, when people are looking for those ideas, I can help guide them along because yeah. um, it, it's easy to get started with. But if you want to make it more advanced, it, it you really sometimes need some handholding to get there. Yeah. And I would say with Asana, the, the, what it's not good at or the challenges I see people run into is when they try and use it for something it's not designed for. Um, for example, like as a sales CRM, I mean, I actually showed that sales project before, but that that's an example of maybe trying to customize it for something it's not great at. Like as a sales CRM, it's it's not going to be as good as something like Pipedrive or HubSpot. I mean, you could customize Asana to work for something like that, but it's not going to be as powerful as other tools that are more fit for purpose. Um, it's also uh, sometimes people want to share projects externally with clients. And I find it's, that can be challenging. There are ways that you can share like a link to a project and you can give people read access, but giving the correct visibility where you show them the status of the task without showing somebody the details of the task and the conversations, that's really hard. So I think if, you, if you're looking for something that's really good for working with clients that you, and you need something that keeps certain things private, yes, there are some workarounds and some things we can do in Asana to, to, to do that, but it's not great for working with clients it's it's more you can invite them in but it's more for your internal team um, and working internally within your team um, it's not going to send email for example you can't email a client through asana um, so there's a few things like that that i think it's 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 not great at and who knows i mean maybe that'll get improved in the future so i guess final question today is let's talk about cost um, if you could share your screen and talk about you know what are the different pricing options how much is trailer going to set you back yeah, absolutely. So I don't work for Trello, so I can say this. There's multiple plans, but the free plan will get you 90% of the way to go. You rarely will need more than the free plan. Um, and I say that because Trello is a super powerful tool. Um, you can do a lot with it. And the biggest limitation people often see to the free plan is you can only have 10 boards per workspace. But the truth is you can have as many workspaces as you want. And so you can actually use those as folders. For instance, let's say you want 10 boards in your kitchen or your, or your recipe space or 10 boards for your marketing team and 10 boards for your software team. Like super, you can, you can easily overcome that. Um, 
The only reason you might need to invest in some of these higher plans is if you're interested in using custom fields, which um, again, that's a that's a specific piece in Trello where where you can add specific fields on top of a card. For instance, if you want to be able to, to view something besides these default pieces that it already has with it. Um, but again, I have found a lot of workarounds with that for labels or, you know, other sort of ways you can get through that. So yeah. not, not usually a deal breaker. Um, or if you're doing some serious automation and need a lot of Butler rules, which you won't need starting out. Um, and that's actually my biggest piece of advice when you're starting with Trello is start small and grow into what you need. Um, so yeah, that's really the only times you're going to have to start looking at paid plans. And so it's it's uh, just confirming these prices are per user per month. So that correct. premium one there, it's ten dollars per user per month. Yeah. Yes, uh, that's that's correct. Yes, yes, yeah. good point. And and the yeah standard is five dollars. Um, and enterprise plan is obviously for enterprise. Um, and so yeah, per per user per month. Yeah, and this is where I think Asana. Uh, sorry, excuse me, Trello definitely has an advantage. It I can see it is cheaper than Asana. If you could go to the Asana pricing for me. Because uh, I'm showing the New Zealand pricing on my screen. So here's the US pricing. Same thing with like with lots of software. Asana does come with a basic uh, free plan. So there's no limit on the number of tasks or projects you can create, which is great. You will find if you once you surpass 15 members in your account that you will be required to upgrade to at least the premium. So if you're going to be needing it for more than 15 people, you should be budgeting premium. Um, I would say... Most people should be budgeting premium, even for a small team anyway, just to unlock some of the power, just the useful features of Asana, like the timeline, workflows, custom fields, templates, really to get the, the true value of Asana. I do think people need to be paying for premium. That's what most of our clients do. I don't really see many people, uh, at least with the ones, the clients we work with, I don't see many people just trying to use the free version. Most people are paying for it. So it is $10.99 per user per month billed, uh, if that, that's if you pay annually. The price does uh, double or more than slightly more than double if you go up to business. I usually recommend most people start on premium just to get used to the features. And then business is going to unlock some more powerful features is things like portfolios, which we saw briefly earlier. So you can see kind of this overview of your projects. There's also goal planning now in Asana. If you, so you can actually put in company KPIs and goals. There's resource or workload management. So you can see how much work people on your team are doing and some more advanced uh, business features as well. Um, so it definitely gets, it can get pretty fat powerful if you're, if you're willing to pay the money. I mean, I would say for a tool that's really boosting the productivity of your team, and it is, like I said, it's the tool that you really live and breathe in on a daily basis. I feel $25 per user per month, pretty reasonable. Um, but like I said, if you're getting started and you're not sure, I usually point people to the premium plan uh, and you can get started on that and decide if it's worth upgrading to business later if you want some of those more powerful features. Definitely makes sense. I feel like whatever tool you you take is to try to start small and grow into what you need rather than assuming yeah. you're going to use everything right off the bat. So thank you so much, Brittany, for joining me in this video. I hope um, people have found this useful. Like I said, if you have any questions about Asana or Trello, feel free to post them in the comments below. Brittany, I'll um, have to call on you to answer any Trello questions. And, I'm here uh, for it. Yeah, thanks everyone for watching. See you in the next video. If you'd like to get more out of Asana and need help setting up or optimizing your account, if you want to automate more of your project management process and you want to correctly train and onboard your team, then check out my Master Asana program. When you sign up, you'll be able to join twice weekly group calls so you can get help from me and get your questions answered anytime you need support. You can also book private one-on-one -on -one consulting sessions with me where we can take a deep dive into your account, I can show you key features, and I can even do group training workshops as well. And finally, you'll get access to my online course, which goes into a lot more depth and detail and covers topics that I don't cover on YouTube. So if you truly want to master Asana, then sign up today and I'll see you on the inside.